Hi! Welcome back to what is officially episode 3 of Pushing Voxels Forward. Uh, right now I was actually working on the Marching Cubes implementation, or the positive equals minus implementation of it rather. Um, and a, a couple of you guys said that you wanted to see me actually kind of work through stuff, so um, I guess while I was working on it I would fumble, fumble through it while recording. So I started with the uh, a uniform marching cube chunk. So basically, this is going to contain the vertex buffer objects, the index buffer um, or element buffer, I guess it's called in OpenGL, and it's going to contain the vertex array object, and then um, basically that's what's going to contain the bulk of the information. So one of the things that I would like to do with marching cubes is allow uh, the vertices to be indexed, which by default, if you copy any of the uh, any of the implementations out there, you're probably not going to find that. It's actually really easy to implement because um, there's going to be one vertex per edge cross. All right, sorry about that. My A, uh, AC had kicked on, so I had to shut it off. I decided sweating it out would be better than listening to background noise. Um, so yeah, I was saying with indexed uh, index vertices, it's really easy because you have one edge crossing. Uh, or one vertex per edge crossing and so if you know which edges that you're working with you know that there's already going to be a vertex there and then you can just use that index rather than creating a new vertex which is what marching cubes does by default. So one of the things you'll notice here is a flag for positive equals minus that indicates whether or not we're going to be using the extended table to extract the mesh and the reason why I added this is because uh, up until a few minutes ago, my understanding with the snap MC algorithm was you move the grid vertices, uh, and when I slightly implemented it, that is how I did it, in fact. But looking at the paper, the way it words it right here, it says reset the scalar value um, of the ISO surface vertex to the ISO value. It, it actually doesn't say uh, modify the location of the grid vertices themselves, and then to just modify or run marching cubes on the modified scalar grid, which makes me think that we don't actually move the grid vertices, we can use an implicit grid. What I'm going to go ahead and do is actually just kind of assume that we don't move the vertices and then just see how it works because it, um, I haven't implemented SnapMC in like a uniform level and gotten it working. So usually with marching cubes you see people implement a cell structure where it contains eight vertices and possibly eight values uh, maybe even 12 sign changes along with that cell. What we're going to go ahead and do is actually only store, for now anyways, uh, edges which include um, really just the, if there's a sign change and then where the ISO vertex, I guess, uh, is what we would call it according to the paper, uh, is located and then what the value of course is there maybe and then the index, uh, vertex index for it. So. Might be something like this. Huh. I wonder if there's a way to do a bit field and have it accessed as an array as well. So we can do uh, crossings 0 through uh, 0, 1, and 2 and just have them take up a bit. So as it turns out, it's not possible. Uh, you have to actually break it down into a standard size like this. So that is what I chose to do. Right now the ISO vertex only contains uh, its position value and then I chose or stored whether it had a crossing uh, for each axis and then um, you know the ISO vertex just in case I'm going to be adding any more variables like maybe I'll store the normal or the material or something like that. You know people often critique using Visual Studio especially when you're writing something like C but the number one reason why I like using it aside from its debugger is because you can do this. Boom. If you're wondering how I did that, uh, if you hover over this and then you uh, you press when it actually has the warning, control period, it brings up what it calls light bulb actions, I think. And then you can uh, create a definition. I just hit enter because it's the default option. Alright, so I think we have the general structure done. Um, I'll just quickly run through it. 
like I said, we have the ISO vertex and the edge and what it contains. And I just quickly created the, the cell structure, which is what we're going to be passing into the, I guess would be the polygonize function. And that will just quickly extract the indexes of the triangles that, we're, uh, that we are creating. And so we're just going to initialize pretty much everything here at this create function. Alright, so it looks like we have all the initialization code in there, at least the zeroing out. I easily could have used memset zero, but just in case I ever throw a float in here, I don't want to have to worry about it. So for now, I just kept it as um, just assigning everything to zero. And then, of course, I added uh, index vertices, and then I don't remember if I had to use PEM in there, but I have that, and then, of course, uh, the destination chunk that we are creating. So. Uh, based on the uh, the dimension of the chunk, we're going to go ahead and uh, allocate enough grid vertices and then edges. All right, so I went ahead and I made the allocations, and you'll notice that it uses dimension plus one. That is because for a cell, you have where it starts at and then where it's going. So that means whenever that we call this, if we want any sort of efficiency, we're going to have to use um, two to the n minus one for the dimension that we pass in. And then I went ahead and created the simple function pointer for the sampler function. That way, if whenever we wanna change what it samples, we could just change this. Right now it's constant, um, but for the sake of debugging in the future, it'll probably be something that we can uh, change during runtime. Of course, don't ever forget to delete the stuff that you allocate. We will use the uh, destroy function for this. Uh, you will oops, you will notice that when you use the control period create definition uh, is for C anyways it doesn't put the struct in there so if you don't type def your structs and then add um, I forgot what it's called the part after that then you just have to add it in yourself you know this actually reminds me uh, speaking of deleting stuff that's a really good chance to include something like this. Um, so we have some sort of output if we have memory leaks. Uh, I actually added this in the wrong file. It's supposed to go in entry. This is real simple if you use uh, Windows. All you have to do is just include that. And then at the end of your main function or wherever you want to say okay everything is freed uh, you just call this function if you don't use windows there is a leaker leaker file uh, I can't remember unfortunately where I got this but here's the uh, the main part of it it's basically the same thing but you can use it um, I use this on my other C project when I'm working on Linux so the run is going to be pretty straightforward. It's just going to label the grid and then uh, classify all the edges and then finally run um, uh, run the ex extraction phase on it, which is where it actually creates the triangles. I just went ahead and just started with the label grid just so we can get that done and then we'll focus on the other things. So for the label grid, we're just going to do something real simple, which is run all the way through uh, the dimensions cube, uh, run the sampler function on each corner, and then classify if it's inside or outside. I actually don't even think we we need to do that, but we will uh, go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to use XYZ. Yeah, we don't want to use uh, size T there because that's an unsigned long long because we're in 64 bit I guess uh, so we don't really want to do that there we go 
and then we have sample function here. I'm just going to go ahead and assert that as well, just to make sure that that's not zero. Real quick, I'm going to create a macro to simplify uh, the math that we have to do here to get an index from the three values. There we go, that should work. Then I will replace that. Much simpler. One thing that I forgot was the scale. I'm not sure if we want to implement a scale value into this. I think for now we won't. Alright, so this looks to be the finished function. I went ahead and instead of casting uh, the X, Y, and Z to float here, just for simplicity and also to kind of save on the uh, instructions to convert it to a float, I went ahead and just threw it up there and that should be fine. Also that noise that you probably just heard was my dog. So here we have the classify edges function and this is going to be a little bit more tricky. Unfortunately, it's not just a simple loop. We have to do a couple of extra things. Um, so, to start, obviously, we have to classify the grid vertex. That's easy. It's just the x, y, z for where it's at. The it has crossings. We're going to have to figure out what the other vertices are. Um, should be simple in theory, I'm hoping. And then we just have to create the iso vertices depending on the uh, depending on the crossings. So if any of you have been paying attention, you probably noticed that with the edge, I did it for three edges when really it should just be grid vertex and then uh, grid vertex two. Uh, I guess what I was thinking when I made this was that we were going to be kind of treating everything as a cell, which I said I wouldn't, I wasn't really going to be doing. Um, so I think I'll, for now, I'm going to go ahead and change it. So it is uh, just vertex zero and one. The only problem doing it this way is it's going to be a little bit slower and probably have a worse cache hit rate, but I'm all for functionality first and then optimizing later just so we can make sure everything works properly. Oh boy, that is a lot of code just for edge classification. Um, so this all here, it's, of course it's not even done, as you can see there are two to do cases here, uh, but this is just sampling the uh, main grid vertex then determining the mask, whether if one side is inside, equal, or positive, eventually. And then calculating the crossing and classifying it uh, as such. And then it'll be storing the uh, new ISO vertex in some sort of list, which we have yet to create. Uh, one thing about this that I've noticed while I wor was working on it is we don't even have to keep the edges that are empty because marching cubes, uh, regardless of which table we use, will never, will never use an edge that doesn't have a crossing on it. So we might take advantage of that just to save ourselves uh, the memory and also try to get our cache hit rate up because this right now is just going to be abysmal just looking at it, which is the number one reason that voxels are slow in the first place. Whoa, okay, big cut. Uh, so I was working on this a lot off camera and I, I'm at the point right now where it's pretty much complete. Um, I'll just quickly, quickly go over everything. So first we label the grid, then the edges, and then there's the final polygonize uh, function that, that gets called. Labeling the grid just uh, basically figures out where all the grid vertices are and then samples the points and then uh, the edge labeling is where it actually creates the edges and finds intersection points and then calculates the normals. And finally the polygonize function uh, builds a cell based on the intersecting, uh, intersecting edges and then outputs a stream of indexes that get rendered. So uh, right now I have I have not <laughs> not tested any of this. I mean I've kind of tested it a, a little bit just to make sure it doesn't crash. Right now it doesn't um, and if we run it, I'll just quickly alt tab, we can see at the top left that the council uh, oops, 
console output says that the uh, that everything worked it output 567 vertices and 1045 primitives not sure if you can see that but it says that it did it um, and I've already went ahead and I prepared the shader to render with normals and uh, uh, yeah just basically in normals for basic diffuse lighting so um, I'm gonna quickly make it right to the uh, right to the index buffer I don't remember if I did that it looks like I might have and then render it uh, create it and then render it and then we'll see if it works all right here we go building it succeeded we're gonna go ahead and run it we are expecting a sphere and we get nothing nothing at all oh yeah so it's working now the uh, I mean partially working we have a quarter of a sphere but that's just because of the the offset right now it's just it doesn't take into account that the origin is um, not actually zero 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 but anyway the problem was something real simple like it always is uh, next vertex here has been passed in as a pointer I was not dereferencing it there was also a problem with the uh, OpenGL stuff I think uh, when I was generating the index buffer I wasn't using GL element array buffer I was just using GL array buffer I think so I'm assuming that that caused problems okay now we'll see if we get a full sphere uh, no still no oh oops I'm kind of dumb and it crashes okay I'm gonna find out what this is all about okay I believe I fixed it I was forgetting to reallocate the out normals here and I'll go into detail about how this all works in a moment uh, okay this is a good sign all right there we have it a uh, complete sphere done with it's just standard marching cubes and it indexes the vertices um, and then the grid is set up in a way that we could possibly move it for positive equals minus some of the code is going to be is going to have to be changed and I have left a couple things out in terms of the reinitialization if you were paying attention but we have regular marching cubes working here all right guys well that's going to do it for this episode um, I have not edited it yet but I'm going to assume that's going to be kind of long so again leave your feedback and let me know what you thought um, don't really have experience programming and talking about what I'm programming especially if it's uh, something more complex and just like making a 2d game so uh, here's what it looks like with the wireframe by the way so as you can see it is standard marching cubes and uh, in the next episode we're gonna try to get the positive equals minus stuff working and then we'll, we'll be able to switch between the two uh, so you can see the difference uh, and again just if you're cur curious about 4,000 vertices and then uh, 8,000 primitives here. But as always, be sure to check out voxelspace.net if you haven't already. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.